The Bad Boys are back in Bad Boys Ride or Die, the fourth installment in the Bad Boys franchise, a franchise that I honestly thought was dead when the second one came out. They'd always talked about doing a third one, but I was like, do you really need to do another one? Then they did Bad Boys Forever, and I watched it, and I was like, oh, that was the best Bad Boys film in my opinion. Two new directors taking on the Bad Boys, but you bring back Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Okay! It works. And the third film sets up a sequel and I'm like, okay, I'm like all in for this. If you keep making it this consistency, let's keep doing it. And then the slap heard around the world happened. And I never thought this movie was going to get made. I genuinely never did. I was hoping it still would be. I wanted to see Will Smith come back, show that resurgence. And while ne maybe not for everybody, Will Smith is going to be your cup of tea anymore. He still is mine. I still love him as an actor. People mess up. All things happen. You hold your opinion, I'll hold mine. That's okay. We're talking about movies here. Bad Boys Ride or Die might be my favorite Bad Boys film. Again, that's going to take a couple rewatches for me to really come to that definitive term. But man, did I have a blast with this. I think it's just up there with the consistency of it. If you love all the Bad Boys movies, you're going to probably love this one. If you don't like the Bad Boys movies, then this movie probably won't change your mind. But for me, it contains laughs, it contains action, and it contains a ton of fun. And honestly, like as a fan of the franchise, in a way it kind of feels like the greatest hits of the franchise. Because it brings about a lot of earned character moments not just from martin lawrence and will smith but particularly other characters that i don't want to get into spoilers about but i was very happy with that and i'm excited to talk about bad boys ride or die make sure to leave your thoughts down below hit that like and subscribe button and if you don't know what ride or die is about well when their late police captain gets linked to the drug cartels wisecracking miami cops mike lowry and marcus burnett embark on a dangerous mission to clear his name now you know who stars in the bad boys it's will smith and martin lawrence and once again they are fantastic fantastic in these roles really much while they are in a way playing elevated versions of themselves the thing that i love about the bad boys films is the fact that you can just tell their chemistry is oozing you can really feel the budding best friend cop relationship between the two and I think when it comes down to buddy cop action films, it's really hard to deny that the bad boys are not some of the most consistent, but also two of the best buddy cop action buddy duos that you could ever really come to fruition on. What the f you said? <laughs> And I love them. And what I really loved about Ride or Die was the fact that they actually changed and flipped up the script on both characters. Typically, Martin Lawrence is more of the worry war and he's always screaming and, you know, just kind of going along for the ride with Will Smith. And this time they kind of flipped it. Will Smith has some more internal, personal things going on, which might not be for everybody, but he does. So he's more of the cautious one this time. And Martin Lawrence has something happen to him in here where it makes him go, Life's too short, man. He's the wild, rambunctious one. And I love that they kind of both had a different tone to it. At the same time, it may not reinvent the entire wheel for the Bad Boys franchise, but it puts a little bit of fresh blood into these characters, as well as so do the directors here. I thought they did a great job with the last film, but I also think they did a fantastic job this time around with Ride or Die, primarily with the action sequences and what they were able to accomplish here. I think the action sequences in 3 were probably some of the best. None, not as bombastic and big as and explosive as, of course, what Michael Bay did with the second Bad Boys film. There was clearly some things towards the end, but this this one feels a little bit more knitted and tight to the ground in terms of action scenes. Yes, you still get a lot of explosions. Yes, things explode and get completely torn apart. There's a helicopter sequence in here that is awesome. But I like how more knitted to the ground the action sequences were in here. And they really took a lot of inspirations from video games. They do a lot of first-person perspective in here. Saw a little bit of that in the trailer. Didn't know how I was going to feel about it. But I actually think it's integrated really nicely into the movie. And never feels like it's going too far but really grounds you and brings you into the moment of what's going on. Really makes you guessing what's going to happen next, what might be used as a weapon next, and how will, might the next person explode or bleed or catch on fire. Everything at the two cops at, in this film, you have cartel members coming after them, you have dirty cops coming after them, you have gang members coming after them. Everyone is after them, it seems like. And I really dug that vibe overall because while they may have had certain things like this in the past for them, when they feel like they're at their wits end and they're really just by themselves, I thought that was a great little 
remark to kind of put into here. And again, that to keep the intensity of the pacing going. Well, definitely those two are the star. I think when it comes down to the most recent Bad Boys films, primarily this one and the last one, I think some of the side characters do deserve a little bit of recognition. I think Vanessa Hudgens is a lot of fun. I would like to see a little bit more of her in these movies. Alexander Ludwig, I think, is just great. Every time he shows up in this, he always has those nice little remarks. He was great in the last one, and he has some great moments in here. Lula Nunez, I thought, was fantastic in the last one, and in this one, again, just great. Eric Dane, great as the villain. Ian Gruffad, I always mispronounce his name. He's he's great. He's Mr. Fantastic. I liked him in here as well. And Jacob Siaipo, who was, of course, in the last movie as well, played Marcus's son. I love what they do with him in here, and I think he's just great. Really cool father-son dynamic in here, and I think the way that it actually elevates the character to a different degree made me happy. One character in here that, if when you see the movie, you'll know who I'm talking about. I don't want to say who it is. They get a very earned character moment in here, and I loved it. It was hands down one of the best sequences in the entire film, not in just in terms of action, but also in terms of laughs, and it really builds up all the way since the first Bad Boys movie. Again, just goes back to being and feeling like the greatest hits of the Bad Boys. If this was to be where the franchise ends, then I would actually feel pretty definitive and fine with it. If they decided to keep going on and they make it to that same consistency, then I'm okay with that. This is just a good old hearkening back to the 2000s action movies, and that's what I'm really happy to see. It might interject some new things into it that, of course, modern technology allows, but it still is just that classic feel with the laughs again when I say the laughs like there are some really really good stuff in here and there always is in this franchise but Martin Lawrence just takes it up a notch and may have stole the show in this one personally usually more of a Will Smith guy in all these bad boys movies but like I genuinely think Martin Lawrence was the best part about this film probably but I do want to be a negative Nancy for a second I do have some issues with the movie and let's get those out of the way I think these are what holds me back from being on that teetering line of is this my favorite bad boys film is it not is it just as consistent as the others and kind of tied with some of the other things that's kind of where I'm relying on and you know rewatches will kind of figure out if these cons are a little bit worse or not first thing I have to mention is Ray Seahorn is in this I think she's phenomenal and Better Call Saul and was absolutely wasted in here in fact I was very disappointed in the usage of her I don't even know why they had her in here well I understand for the story why they did but I you could have casted anyone else I think she could have been used to a whole different degree and it really disappoints me because not everyone has seen Better Call Saul not everyone has seen how fantastic of an actress she is and I'm really worried that most people we're going to watch her in this and then be like, oh, like, I don't like that character, so I'm not going to like her. And that's going to suck. So if you're watching this and you haven't watched Better Call Saul yet, you should definitely go check it out. She is fantastic in there. Honestly deserved a lot more to do in this movie. Alongside that, my other thing in this one I can't really talk about. I have to stay a little bit vague because I don't want to spoil anything. But there's something that gets introduced very early on in Mike Lowry's story into this movie. And once it's introduced, I was like, oh. Okay, so we're not going the other direction that feels like it was kind of set up in the third movie. And I feel like that was a very big miss. And then the story kind of progressed. And I was like, okay, it's a little predictable. I know who's probably the bad guy and who's probably not. But there was one thing that always kind of kept teetering there. And I was like, okay, if you did this, I feel like this would fix this issue. And then it just never did. And maybe that's just me being the hopeless romantic there, there's something in there, but that, that's all about I can say without getting into spoilers. So when you see the movie, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. We can talk about it down below in the comment section, though. Last but not least, my final issue is I did find that some of the pacing was a bit off. I think some of the Bad Boys movies have a little bit of pacing issues, more coming down to the tonal. Sometimes it goes from like extreme comedy to action to all of a sudden very serious. And this one hits like a moment where it's like, straight serious for at least what felt like 20 minutes it was probably less than that but it really hurt the pacing just a tad bit and i think it could have been a little bit stronger to get the film going a little bit faster once again bad boys ride or die is exactly what you want from another bad boys movie it flips the script with its two leads creating even more insanity in between them and some of the best action of the entire franchise a wild ride that had me laughing smiling and having a great time all my issues aside i had a blast with this one i think again if you like the bad boys films you're probably gonna like this one if you do like the Bad Boys films and you don't like this one, I'll be pretty damn shocked. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. With all that said, I'm going to give Bad Boys Ride or Die a B+. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts. And of course, until next time, stay classy.